Mr. Colburn, you've had a unique experience uh, that uh, you were at a location in Yuma, uh, saw the high crime rate, saw the large number of people crossing uh, illegally, saw the vehicular traffic, couldn't do anything about it, wall goes up, and then saw the very significant drop uh, in illegal crossings at that spot as well as uh, vehicles and people. So I, let, me get, let me get some specific questions to you on some of this. What did you see as far as delays? There's been a lot of conversation about land acquisition. We had delays in constructions and permitting, road access and such. What did you see in delays? What were the causes of those, those delays? And did construction move in other areas while they were working out the delays in other spots? The delays in Yuma uh, were not as significant to compare them, say, to South Texas. And uh, significantly, a lot of that has to do with the fact that along that 125-mile uh, stretch of the border, 96 percent of the land uh, adjoining Mexico on the U.S. side is uh, federally publicly stewarded lands. So it was uh, Bureau of Reclamation at, within the Department of Interior. Uh, it was uh, Nas National Park Service. It, um, it was Bureau of Land Management. It was Department of Defense with the Barium Goldwater Bombing Range. So it was a, a variety of fe federal and publicly stewarded. That does bring in environmental uh, considerations, but uh, when I mentioned earlier about rapidly layering on manpower, technology, and tactical infrastructure, that's what made Yuma that case in point, was we were able to get that together quickly. There are places where, uh, because of private ownership, as we've been discussing, they're more challenging, as well as there are places where the uh, terrain, geographics, and climate uh, will be more costly. Levees will cost more than some of the uh, barriers that we were putting in, in in Yuma at the tune of one, 1.1 1 .1 million a mile. So compared to the 5 million uh, per mile in South Texas, it was rather uh, efficient in, in the uh, desert areas of Yuma for much of that, that part of it. Not everywhere, though. We do, we do have a, a roughly 20 miles of river boundary. People forget. They think of Arizona as all land boundary. But the Colorado River does separate not just the states of California and Arizona, but also uh, Baja California Norte and, um, and Sonora. So the, it's, it is an international boundary marked by water. What the smugglers were doing there were building bridges with sandbags. And their engineering was, was amazing. Overnight, they very squared, very level, and just inches below the surface of the water so that the bridges could not be detected off the reflecting angle of the sun in the early morning hours. They could drive a number of vehicles laden with drugs across in, uh, in the er early uh, darkness hours. They were building those in one night. Uh, talk about sometimes you don't have a technical so solution. Well, now they have technology that can detect it, and they have barriers that can keep them from freely driving over the levees uh, and across the bridges. But we still had to wade into the river uh, with machetes and slit each bag of sand. So as they built it during the night, we tore it down during the day. And uh, that's what finally defeated them. It became a two cost inefficient for this, the organized crime groups to continue building one overnight. So uh, sometimes uh, rudimentary uh, force muscle wading into the river with a knife, slitting open bags, is the, the solution. Uh, as uh, both the chief and I have, have mentioned, it's, it's, it's not a uh, cookie cutter solution anywhere along the border. Each sector, even within each sector, we find uh, different combinations of uh, resources that solve that problem. But uh, certainly um, in Yuma, uh, we, we had it easier because of the publicly stewarded lands. Mr. Aguilar, talk to me about the technology. So that's one of the prime uh, areas to be able to innovate on first. What technology is needed and what do we have that we need more of or what do we not have that we need to put in place? The technology is going to be an absolutely critical part of anything you should do anywhere along the border. The type of technology that we're talking about is a technology that will give you situational awareness, persistent situational awareness of anywhere that agents are going to be interested as to what's happening along the border. Today we have IFTs, Integrated Fixed Towers, which started way back when uh, uh, Chief Colburn and I were in the field. We have remote video surveillance systems. We have mobile surveillance capability systems. Hold on, slow down. Towers, how frequent? 
So let, 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 let's get more specific as we're talking through this. When you talk about towers, towers, how frequently do you need those? You've got a 2,000 mile border, is that every two miles? Is that every five miles? Is that every 500 feet? Let, let, let me step back, not to towers, because basically, again, it gets to the type of geography as to where we are deploying the kind of capability we're looking for. In Arizona, for example, when, when, when I was the chief of the Border Patrol, we lined out the exact number of towers that had a view shed that had a capability to cover an entire area. But along with that, we had some problems because we had, for example, the Tejon Autumn Nation. 75 miles of the border of the Tucson sector, where I was chief, uh, bottom line is we were not allowed because of the sovereignty of the nation, of the Tohono O'odham Nation, to build that type of technological capabilities. But today there are technological capabilities that could now basically give that same type of situational awareness. Drones, tethered drones that basically are going to have eye view, uh, view sheds of seven or eight miles wide, maybe even, even higher. So areas where we cannot put a, an integrated fixed tower or a remote video surveillance system, and, and by the way, the integrated fixed towers have capability of a view shed of 8, 10, 12, 13 miles, depending on where they're, they are placed. Line of sight. Line of sight for infrared capability, line of sight for Doppler radar, line of sight for cameras, very high quality, high fidelity cameras. So it all depends on where you're going to be placing. There, is plan there are plans in place by the Border Patrol for the entirety of the southwest border. Now, we also have to take into account that, as an example, integrated fixed towers, which work very well in Arizona, will not work as well in South Texas. The reason for that is the vegetation, the density, the triple canopies. So all of those things need to be taken into account. But the chiefs are aware of what they need. There are designs out there that basically have been put in place for that. Great. Thank you. Senator Carper. Thanks, uh, 